everybody. Um, I'd just like to say thank you for coming. I'm really excited to be here, even though I have a chest infection, so I might just be coughing a little bit. You just have to forgive me for that. Um, I was... Um, I think first you're going to be given um, peppered ice cream, peaches and toffee, which is a dish that kind of all came through. Basically, starting point was pepper. Um, if any of you know polpetto, it's very simple, um, seasonal um, food, and I change the menu all the time, um, constantly inspired by one thing and taking it a little bit further. Um, so pepper was my starting point for this. It kind of adds a really lovely um, kind of fragrant taste, and you've got the creamy ice cream, which just lowers the spice, and the sweetness of the toffee and the peaches just to balance everything out. So I hope you really enjoy that. Um, I was asked today to talk all about trends, and I had a really good, long, hard think about it. And I thought, actually, trends are fads. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not really very interested in trends. To me, food, what matters is good, honest food that's locally grown, sustainable, and in season. And some of the latest trends in food, in fact, completely run against all this. Now, I don't want to be morbid or anything, but, and I love a good burger. I love it. And I live in the heart of Soho, and I'm constantly seeing changes of restaurants and you know, the mac and cheese trend and all these things going on. And it's great, but it's fads. And things will go out, and they come in, and they go out. And for me, food is about amazing ingredients and starting that journey with that ingredients and making beautiful, simple food without having to complicate things. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you about basically the fact that our tastes have all got quite exotic and that can be quite destructive. I mean, we all kind of crave all these exotic things and it, it's quite tricky these days because you've got incredible lettuces and apples and all these amazing ingredients growing locally. And you go to the stores and you can't buy local cherries. And it just seems a real shame to me, you know, it's why, why are we not supporting our suppliers? Now, I'll tell you what my trend is and how I learn about what's in season and how I follow everything, if this thing works, let's hope it does. I'm not very good at technology. Now, I've been in this game so long, this is I've Charlie seen chicken Hicks. go from being in a brick to being licked off one. Something we do regularly at home. But this roller coaster weather, I've never seen the like. It's been like living in the tropics, especially the storms. The combination of sunshine and rain is mostly a good thing for fruit and veg. And there's lots of good news from the markets and growers, both at home and across the rest of Europe. A cracking time for stone fruit, with some really excellent British cherries leading the pack. We've even had in a few Morellos from Somerset. Cherries won't be around for much longer, so do make the most of them. The first green gauges from France are generally very good indeed, although there have been one or two problems with overexcited growers harvesting a bit too early. Another couple of weeks, I think, for these. It's not ready yet. Nice, but just a little bit too bitter. We also have some absolutely fantastic red flesh peaches and nectarines coming in from Italy and France, and they taste just as good as they look. They're still superb French apricots, which are frankly irresistible. It's a pleasure getting the opportunity to eat all of this stuff, you know. English plums are just getting underway, and this week bought the first of the Mirabelles from South East France. There's lots of very, very good British soft fruit. Strawberries and raspberries are abundant, and there's still gooseberries, both green and red. Lovely blueberries from the Chin family farm in the Wye Valley, and lots of currants. Red, white and black. The European grape season's on right. Indeed it is. Look at these beautiful prima grapes from our chum Monsieur Nourit in Provence. And the first box of Muscat that arrived this morning, again from Provence. Expensive at the moment, but prices will soon drop. This year's French fig harvest suffered terribly in the bad weather earlier this year, and if we do see any figs from France, it probably won't be till the end of the month. It seems that very, very heavy rain interfered with the figs flowering properly. Now, if you're thinking you've never seen a fig flower, that's because the fig actually flowers internally, inside the immature fruit or siconium. The fig is an ancient and mysterious fruit. 
nearly as mysterious as Raymond Blanc's accent. Best for look north here, the taste is sweet as wine. It is Sauvignon Blanc, you know, just really fresh, clean, fragrant, vegetal. European melons are plentiful and in tip-top shape. Mini baby watermelons from Italy. Fantastic. French Charente are of course superb, uh, as you would expect, and we're very taken by the Piel de Sapo or toad melons from Spain. Piel de Sapo melons, incredibly high sugar content. A veritable plethora of English veg, all that magical combination of quality and value. This beautiful chard, both regular and rainbow, cauliflowers and Romanesco, runner beans of course, and the first of the English sweet corn, which can drive a chap to poetry, well, to ramble on anyway. Big for me, fresh every year. I mean, it's just one of the highlights of the season. Uh, you know, everybody loves it. Barbecue. There's beautiful. even the first autumnal veg, with locally grown new season Cavallo Nero and red kale, and these onion squash from Spain, and the very first cob nuts from France. Finally, some very wise counsel on the mushroom front. Loads of great mushrooms coming in from Europe at the moment. Fantastic value. Give us a call. And see what's about. For those who... Charlie. Right. It's obviously a problem because I, I bought it somewhere else. Oh, I can do my mouth. Oh, it's loud. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Sue just started laughing. <laughs> Sue just started laughing. <laughs> Take 14. I think, I think that stopped. Um, well, that kind of thing generally gets me so excited. When I hear that the peaches are incredible and they're ripe and they're perfect, that is my trend. That is what I want to work with. That's how I develop a dish. Um, so who are your trendsetters? I mean, I'll take you on a little journey. Recently, I met a wonderful garlic farmer who was a cattle farmer, and he came up with this great idea just to grow garlic naturally, no pesticides, nothing. So the fields just have these poppies growing everywhere. He doesn't care about all that kind of thing. He just, you know, butterflies everywhere. And these things called scapes, that people normally throw in the bin. These incredible green long things. Um, he, you know, started saying, well, why aren't people using these? Why? You know, they're, in, they're going in the bin. Um, and um, I started playing around with them and um, cooking with them. And they're incredible. I mean, they're the, the shoots of the garlic um, that are normally just cut off because they steal all the moisture and all the goodness from the garlic. So, once, I mean, they're, they're strong, they're intense, but once you work out how to use them, they're an amazing ingredient. So, you know, we don't need to buy garlic from Norway or, you know, China. Um, I've got a few pictures here, if this works, of this is us in the field. You can see it just looks like these are the scapes, these curly things growing everywhere. And that's Mark. But um, I just um, believe strongly that we can get wrapped up in what's fashionable and forget what's real and honest and amazing, quite frankly. And it's right in front of all of us every day. And we don't really have to look that far for it. So um, what should all our trends be? What are all your trends? Um, I know that mine are locally grown, fresh, sustainable and seasonal. Thank you very much.